It's the Lockdown Flyers podcast for Thursday, June 20th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is making some dream picks and reach picks. Getting dreamy here. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, so we got some late breaking news as we were about to record our show. The Lehigh Valley Phantoms extended head coach Ian LaPerriere for two more years. Yeah, hey, congrats to them. I mean, you know, they've made the playoffs the last two years. Uh, yeah, not everything's perfect. But he also, you know, for lack of a better term, stays out of John's way. Uh, John has a good relationship with him. What they're doing is working on the Lehigh level. I still think it's a little broken uh, getting to the NHL level as far as not playing the same system. But beyond that, yeah, it's going good so far. I think the next two years, uh, the job gets harder, though. Like These were the easier years because there was no expectations. Now the job gets a little harder. Yeah, I think there were expectations this year in terms of making the playoffs for sure. And the, yeah, they that's did fair. achieve that. They got to the second round, which is further than they did last year. And uh, I think, though, that the issue with this past year is not only did they have fewer points than they did last year, but uh, they also had a much lower win percentage. And if you look at their games against the top competition in their division, There was not a lot of success there. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, we watched a lot of these games this season. And I think the the biggest theme for me was like a lack of adjustment and the ability to really take the prospects and get them a little further than they should have. I think with some, there was some success there for sure. I think that Emil Andre learned a lot this season. Uh, But I think, you know, to be fair to him, he was stuck in a difficult position where I think, you know, Andre, not Andre, but Adderd and Jinning to a large degree have maxed out what they can learn at the AHL level. And he was kind of stuck with them there trying to figure out how to utilize them to continue their growth. So, you know, I think it was a mixed bag of results, despite the fact that they did get further and how he continues to handle player development is going to be key. Yeah. And it was, it was an interesting year because he was losing players early just for going up and really not even playing at times uh, at the NHL level. Oh, with Lixol, especially, especially. Right. Which is tough. But then he got a big break when the Flyers weren't going to make the playoffs and got everybody at the end. So that was like, so that's why I think for people that want to bring up the first thing, I think it evened itself out. So I'm with you. I think they could have been better, even though, look, every year the playoffs change as far as how teams are and how you make it and what games you win and lose. But you're right. The winning percentage is a key factor. Right. So I think, you know, these next two years, we're going to have to put more pressure, I think, on the Phantoms to not only find more success in the win loss columns, but also with player development. And as we have, you know, more key prospects entering the system over the next couple of years, he's going to have a really tough job. And I, I think, you know, there's, there's going to be more pressure on him and we'll, we'll see how he handles it. Yeah. There's more, there'll be more pressure on him than John. John is For still sure. like, you know, the team's looking at it like, Hey, we're in rebuild mode. We, you know, we almost made the playoffs. That's great. But from down below, it's like, well, in two years, when Mitch coughs here, we got to be ready. Some of these players have to be ready. That's, that's his job now. Yep, absolutely. 
Uh, as far as the flyer side of things, today will be the pre-draft press conference for Danny Breer. We'll see what he has to say and talk about that on tomorrow's show. Uh, the other big NHL news, I guess, was the Markstrom deal to the Devils, uh, which we kind of knew was happening, but you know how it went down and what the trade was, I think, was good for both sides. I mean, it was okay for Calgary. It was great for the Devils. Uh, Kevin Ball, I don't think, is a top four defenseman. So you didn't get a top four defenseman. Sure, he's physical and he's big and he's a decent skater, but he's a bottom pair guy. So you got a bottom pair guy and a 2025 pick, which if everything rolls right, which I think it will for the Devils again next year, you're getting a pick somewhere between 25 and 30. So it's okay. I have I have a feeling um, – they should have traded him when we were at the stadium series. Now I get it when, you know, the devils were balking at Dawson Mercer fine. Um, but there were other guys you could have gotten then. And I just feel like it was, was going to be better in Kevin ball because it was in season for them. They could have possibly made the playoffs if they got Markstrom. You know what I mean? The whole arc of the season would have changed. So I, I feel like you dropped. Yep. That is a fair point for sure. I will see if any other big moves happen prior to the draft. And speaking of the draft, we still have one more day left of voting for y'all out there on the best Flyers draft of the last 20 years, not including the most recent ones because you can't really evaluate them yet. Uh, but that poll is on our YouTube channel. So make sure you get your picks in. Looking at the draft, we've done our mock draft. That was last Wednesday. Uh, make sure you go uh, take a listen if you haven't already. And we thought we would kind of turn this around a little bit by looking at more fantasy land picks here. So our dream picks are a guy drops into the Flyers' hands. We expected him to go much earlier. He's just there. We're going to give you our picks for that at both the 12th overall and the 31st, maybe at this point, or 32nd pick overall, depending on how the Oilers still think it's going to be 32, uh, but you never know. Yeah, yeah the, the percentages just changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we have those two picks. But then our reach picks, uh, picking someone earlier than they might have gone otherwise, because we think they're worth taking that risk on. Uh, for both of those picks as well. Should be fun. Let's start with our dream picks at 12th overall. Like if just by, you know, divine intervention, a particular player drops in the board so that he's available for the Flyers to pick at 12th, who are you taking? The big Russian defenseman, Anton Siliev. I mean, he's six foot seven. You can't teach size. It's He's a very good skater. When he um, when he cuts across the ice, he can do it in a manner that a, a smaller guy normally can do. Uh, big, powerful, like these guys. Just he's got a. He has a very accurate wrist shot at one time, or whether it becomes a big factor for him in scoring, who knows? But it, it is something else in his arsenal. And uh, forty six percent shots on goal thanks to Instead and 57% puck battles won. So, you know, that's a guy and, you know, that's a guy who will develop in the, uh, in the KHL and he could be a world beater. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's interesting because he was available to us in the mock draft and we chose to go with Consta Hellenius instead. And that in some was ways was, need. yeah, yeah. That was and I need. think number one center, that was why. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just interesting because both of these guys like were in this dream pick scenario and we just went yeah. with who had the slight edge and and uh, went with Hellenius instead. But this is our chance to say, but we like the other guy, too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We wouldn't mind having him. Yeah. I mean, I'll take both of them. Let's be real. But yeah. um, I, I think that is a, a good way to start this out. And then my pick there was Tej Aginla. Um, you know, there's no way he's going to be available. And that's why these are dream picks. But at the same time, you know, you look at some of the rankings and some rankings have him further down 
So I don't think it's like 100% impossible, but I think it's about 90% impossible. He's not getting past Calgary. There's yeah. zero chance he gets past yeah. Calgary at nine. I know, but that's why it's a dream pick. Exactly. For me, but for, for those me, people yeah. that have him lower, like he's just, there's no possible way he's getting past Calgary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, he's just a great all-around player with so much potential, would bring so much energy to this team. Oh, he's a great um, interview. He's a great kid. He, he yeah. would get a lot of press, man, a lot. And I think it would be a good compliment to Mitchkoff, honestly. I think it would no, keep no, Mitchkoff no on his toes oh, as I mean, well, he can which I think play is a good center. thing. He hasn't yeah. played the last two years, but he can play center. So, yeah, it would be a fun line. All right. Well, we have to do the same thing for the 32nd overall pick, and we will do that coming up next. It's summer, which always make me think baseball, and especially with the Phillies being a ton of fun this season, I want to be there in person as much as possible. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, views from your seat, and their low price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying those coveted MLB tickets in your town the summer concerts, and more. My favorite part of the app is that it's great for getting notified about last-minute flash deals, and GameTime lets you save even more with zone deals, where you pick a section and let GameTime choose the seat for you. Best of all, they have all-in pricing, so there's no surprise fees at checkout, and your tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through email. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. On tomorrow's show, we will talk about that pre draft presser from Danny Breer. We'll have your poll results. Uh, so there's a lot to look forward to on that show as well. Getting back to our dream picks and reach picks, we're on our dream pick for the 32nd overall pick. And I know who you're going to pick, so I'm just going to let you take it away because you love talking about this guy. Yeah, this is Teddy Stiga. I mean, Teddy Stiga did light up a little bit when I asked him about the Flyers. Uh, yeah, he would be a really good Flyers player because there's there's definitely some Travis Konechny in him in the sense that he is an overachiever for a guy his size. He he can battle that way. Um, he really, when he's in big games, he gives you his best. He always seems to overachieve in tournaments. He agreed with that when I asked him about that at the Combine. Plays defense, strong off the wall, can score or play make, but he always seems to play make um, big goals. Uh, also, he's a guy that you want out there. Uh, if you need a goal and you want him out there, if you're trying to prevent a goal. So I just think he's one of those really glue valuable players that I think he's being undervalued because of his height. And I think people should take another look at him. Yeah, I went with EJ Emery and mm. most of the mock drafts out there have him going somewhere in the 20s. So for him to drop to 32, I think makes him a dream pick. And I just really love uh, everything about what he can do. He's a right-handed defenseman. He's 6'3". Uh, he can fill out for sure. Oh, yeah. um, you know, he's a little bit light for for his height right now. But he's such a good skater. He has such good vision. And, you know, especially if the Flyers take a center or a forward with that other pick, like you want to go with a defenseman here, most likely. And I just think he fits the bill exactly perfectly. And, you know, he is going to University of North Dakota next season, which is an excellent training ground. I, I just think he is a real good uh, potential defenseman for the Flyers here, and uh, I love it. Yeah, he I like him. Uh, he definitely can get stronger. He was crazy at the uh, Combine, broke the record for, the, for yep. the long jump, but was just crazy good athlete. He's a really good skater. There's a lot to like, and there's things he has to work on, too. Yeah, absolutely. 
Going to our reach picks at 12th overall here. These are guys, again, who are probably going later in the draft, but we see something in them that would make us want to take the risk and pick them sooner. So who you got at 12th overall? So my reach pick at 12th overall is Stian Solberg, uh, the strong Norwegian. He um, There's a really funny video out there still. Again, if you haven't checked it out, go to my uh, Instagram feed at Sportsology. Really, really funny how he became a defenseman. But uh, just if you look at a picture of him, uh, he's just got tree trunks for legs. He's a very good skater. He's smart. He's already playing against men. He's going into the SHL. He, his timeline is advanced. And so you would get this guy sooner than you expect. Uh, he'd be a bone crusher at times at the NHL level and can really move the puck. And so, yeah, every team, a lot of teams are going to want him. And this would be an unbelievable dream pick to get him. Yeah, and I think, you know, he would be considered a reach at 12 because a lot of people have him around 20, like 18 to 22. Yeah, I would say so. This is a little bit sooner than he's projected. It's a lot sooner, but, but they like the guy. They they like the yeah. guy. That's I don't know if I did a good enough job saying that because sometimes this vernacular for this game throws me off. But if you like him, you take him at twelve. Who cares if you know I have him at twenty and you have him at twenty five? Doesn't matter. Right, and that's why I picked Jet Luchenko because he's right. at a similar place in the rankings and mock drafts as Solberg is and i man i just really really love this kid i think that you know again if you're looking for a center in this draft i know he's a little bit shorter he's 511 uh, but he uses his physicality so well for somebody who isn't quite six feet he's tall. thick he's and, around 195 mm -hmm. so he's he's got guns he showed them off at the uh at the combine so you know there's there's something to like there for sure a lot to like. Yeah. Yeah. And playing for Guelph this past season, 74 points in 68 games. So, you know, he can produce at an elite level. I think that's really important. And uh, so I think he's definitely worth taking a risk on, especially if the Flyers want to go for that center position. Yeah. I mean, he would come up on the list. Hey, we need a center. Who's there? He's going to be mentioned. Yeah. All right. At 32nd overall, uh, your reach pick, Russ. Cole Hudson. Yeah. I think you need to defend why this is a reach pick and not a dream pick because a lot of people have him ranked higher than 32nd. Well, they're wrong because teams look at him differently. Uh, look, I really like Cole Hudson. I have him ranked, uh, where do I have him ranked? I have him ranked 25th. Uh, now, Having him ranked 25th means he could go anywhere from like 25 to, you know, 35, but usually 25 to 30 something. Here's the thing about Cole Hudson. He still needs to fill out like Lane. That's not a given. Should because he's his brother, but, you know, I'm bigger than my brother and stronger than my brother. Sorry, Mark. Um, <laughs> so you never know. Uh, he still has to. He doesn't have that X factor so much that Lane does with the puck offensively, but it's still great and teammates can't say enough about him, and, and he still creates like crazy. He is good with his stick, and he does stick defend very well, and he knows he has to do that now because he's not heavier, and he, you know, he can't really body check anybody really off the puck. So you're betting that he gets to NHL average or a little better, that he fills out like Lane, and that you know he really can get in the NHL and fulfill the point part because he's going to have to play a lot of power play, and then it depends what pairing is he going to be on. So teams looking at him uh, are going to find a lot of reasons to pass on him, I believe. And and this is the word I get. Maybe they're playing possum, but uh, I don't think they right. are. So I think he's going to go in the second. All right. Uh, I went with Luke Misa, and I know that you have him ranked at 32, I believe. Yes. So still in the first round. So that would match up and wouldn't necessarily be a re reach, but like literally nobody else does. It's just no. So, and that's fair. I, I just, so that's why I'm considering it a reach pick. And I think, yeah. you know, some lists and some mock drafts have him still available at 51 where the flyers would pick in the second round, but I don't think you risk letting him go until that pick. I think no. you have to take him at 32 
just in case. Again, like I know I've had this theme with centers a little bit, but he's just another one of those kids that's really attractive as a center. He's a little bit shorter, but he can go to wing if necessary. Yeah. Which is likely to happen here, but he can add up to a center if you need him to in a Lawton scenario here. But 81 points in 66 games in the OHL. That's like, you can't look at that and say the kid doesn't know what he's doing. No, he doubled his point production. He's yeah. great in transition. He's fast. So, you know, this is a guy when pucks on his stick and you want someone to play at pace, this is your guy. Uh, he knows how to do it. And, and he's terrific with his crossovers. So like, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think some people are just, counting on the fact that he's 5'10 and teams are going to keep passing on him. But I think there's going to be a point where uh, early in the second where, you know, they start teams start looking at it and say, Hey, look, he let's even say he's not a center. This guy can be a playmaking winger. Why are we, why are we just going to let him go? So, and it might still take five, six, seven picks in the second round for that to happen, but sixth round. No. Yeah. So I think that he is definitely somebody that I'm keeping my eye on for the Flyers. And, you know, if they don't take him and he's there at 51 and then they don't take him, I'm going to be a little annoyed. I'm going to yeah, say. That's, because... That would be a good opportunity because, again, you would have to have a bigger guy to balance out the line. But if you had, let's say, him and Catton on the same line, you'd have a line with a lot of pace. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, it'll, it'll be interesting, but if any of our dreams come true or the Flyers make a reach pick, uh, I will be super ecstatic about it. Uh, as far as other options, we had a listener request to look at Nikita Artemanov, and I think he's a, also an interesting option for the 32nd overall pick, and we will talk about him coming up next. Hey, Lockdown Flyers fans, I want to take a moment to bring up one of our partners, the mobile game Ultimate Hockey GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NHL GM and managing your hockey franchise? Do you think you could run the Flyers better than Danny Briere? Well, your dream could come true, and this game is most definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the seasons, and lead it to glory. Hire the right coaches and staff, trade players or draft picks, navigate through free agency and the draft all in a challenging and realistic game world. As a Flyers fan, you know there's no offseason. GMs are constantly making moves at every point of the year to improve their team's chances, and that's why I think you're going to love this game. Uh, yeah, I just I played games like this. I like it. I like to think I could be a GM, but that's probably just in my mind. Ultimate Hockey GM is completely free and playable online. Play, in, play on the go as you want, when you want to. By the way, Locked On Network listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo, promo code Locked On NHL in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit hockeygm.app. That's hockeygm.app or look it up on the App Store. Ultimate Hockey GM, start your dynasty today. All right. So we had a listener request to do a prospect profile on Nikita Ardamanov, and that was from the user Bingy Boodle on YouTube. We've answered their questions before, so thought we'd give them the uh, honor of having a prospect profile on the show. And he's a really interesting option because he's another slightly shorter forward at 5'11". Uh, but has made tremendous progress in the Russian leagues over the last couple of years. Uh, was pretty much an MHL player in 22-23, but this past year stepped up to the KHL and had really good success there, uh, playing in 54 games with 23 points. And he does play more physical than his size would suggest. Yeah, uh, so an interesting thing. There are some times where I don't feel like I have great or good enough views in my time frame, which is, you know, gets tight at times because I'm always going to tournaments and such to really check out a guy fairly. And, and he was one of them. Now I could cheat. I'm on elite prospects meetings all the time. We have a Russian scout. Like I could just go with what they say, but that's not what I like to do with my own, my own list. I like to, you know, be authentic about it. So I did have a chance to put in some extra work and yeah. The skating, the playmaking, all of that's really good. He does have deception on his shot. 
can play right wing or left wing. He needs to round out his two-way game. That's definitely a, a thing. And, you know, looking at some of his goals, some of them are really um, tremendous goals. And then some of them are like, uh, was that an NHL goalie with that going on him? I don't know. So while I like him and I think there's really something there, I couldn't spend a first round pick on him, me personally. I still would wait until the second round. Uh, in that first five, six picks of the second round, I'm okay with it. But I don't want to do it on the first because I still think there's enough that he has to work on. And I think it's great that he's playing in the KHL and he's playing against men. But I do think he's not like, a you know, he, he's not a Demidoff slam dunk. And, you know, there is a point when we look at some of these really fun, hot, you know, prospects from Russia and they, a lot of them make it, but they don't all make it. There is a hit and miss factor on them. You have to admit that because we've seen it. Right. Yeah, I think he would be a little bit of a reach pick, like similar to what we were just talking about um, at, at 32. And I don't know if he'll necessarily be there at 51. Um, and that's a whole other permutation there. Right. But, you know, I, looking at several lists, he's kind of ranked as high as 19, but as low as like 40 or 45. Right. So that's kind of the zone that he's he's been in in a lot of the lists. And that leads me to believe that there is like a, a little additional bit of a project here, which is kind of what you've been talking about. And yeah. th not that that's a bad thing, especially no. when you get to a second or third round pick for sure. But yeah, because your odds round, are lower already. So, right. You know. And I think first round, even at 32, which is like borderline. I just feel like you need a little more certainty here, yes. but I don't think he's a bad pick to make overall. No. I think, you know, you pick him later if, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Listen, if they took him, I would not kill the flyers for making the pick, but I would just say, Hey, this, this is a real like element of risk here because there's a lot of boom here and there is some bust. And so that's, yeah, that's just the way that I would look at it. And how do you think like the Russian factor and, you know, does he compliment Mitchkov in any way? Would he be a good teammate for him? I mean, I think, I think he would that, compliment him. Yeah, I think he would compliment him. And since he plays on either side, I think that's fine. Uh, I think he has to get better defensively, though, because Mitchkov kind of plays a, a really good all around game. And you can't have like a weak link like that, especially if you're playing that fast and fast with the puck. So you can't be fast and loose. You can be fast. So I think that's something where, yeah, it's a possibility, but mm, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not big on it and I don't know his contract situation. I didn't get to see what his contract situation is. Like I heard yesterday, Demidov is after another year, he's coming over. So right. like, you know, if some way, shape or form, which is impossible, but if he were to get to 12 or the Flyers traded up for him, there's certainty of exactly when he's coming over. I don't know when Artanomov is coming over. Yeah, I think, you know, he's under contract through 25, 26. So he's got two more years. Two more uh, years, and then he could extend too. You never know. Yeah. So I think, you know, that is a factor. That's a factor. Uh, to consider. If he only had a one-year contract like Demidov, that would probably boost him enough maybe to get into the bottom of the first. But I, I just kind of think there's going to be a little bit of a Russian factor with him. Yeah, I think so as well. doesn't but, take away from the talent. It's just, yep. it's just life. Yep. And I, so I think he's a good option, but maybe a little bit later, maybe with yeah. the second round pick as, as a little bit less of a risk there but a, a good suggestion especially it less. was you know, the other thing i was gonna say is like let's say the flyers took two defensemen they went with two defensemen then if they if he was there on their first second round pick you got to do it yeah i think so i think that is also a good consideration in terms of what they have done with the other picks uh if you have another draft eligible prospect you want us to get in under the wire uh, please let us know we're happy to talk about them we have a spreadsheet a link in the show notes of everybody we've talked about so far and the show date that we talked about them so if you're curious about them on tomorrow's show we will be talking danny breer and his pre-draft presser we've got those weekly poll results that we talked about 
So very excited to do that. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. You can send in those draft suggestions or questions on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube that's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the Free Fire TV channels app. Have a great day, everyone.